In this lesson, you will understand the key differences between structural walls and architecture walls, and also how to create walls in a new project. Walls can be either architectural or structural, and can be placed both vertically and slanted. A wall can be created between two levels, or from a level with a height. Walls are a type of family termed as a system family. The wall types cannot be loaded like a column. You can create a wall family in your current project or transfer them from other projects. Unlike columns, there is only one category for walls, but a wall can be architectural or structural. If you are working in a structural template, you will not be able to see architectural walls due to the view template. Structural walls also have an analytical model that can be used for structural analysis. An architectural wall can be converted into a structural wall if required. Some Revit elements can be modelled from compound materials, such as walls, floors and ceilings. These elements can then be split into parts for accurate construction drawings and material takeoffs. Walls can be placed with a variety of different methods and could be created from complex surfaces or the draw tools shown below. Before we create the actual walls required in project A, we'll create a new project and just look at some of the overall properties of the wall. In Revit 2021, create a new project and for the template file, in this example, we'll click Structural Template and then click OK. The default template will open up with Level 2 Active. Let's switch this to the Structural Plane Level 1 and we'll then close down Level 2. So we're now ready to look at some of the basic properties of walls. Note on the Structure ribbon, we have the wall icon. And the default wall is a structural wall. However, if I go to the pool down here on the ribbon, you'll notice we have wall structural and also wall architectural. It's also worth noting that if you select the architectural tab, then of course the default here is an architectural wall. So once again, you should always be working in the structure ribbon. So let's go ahead and select the wall command. Before we create the wall, we'll take a look up onto the context ribbon, and you'll note here we have modify place structural wall. We also have a draw panel shown, and note here we have a number of different drafting tools, as well as the ability to pick existing lines and also pick faces from imported categories such as Revit massing elements or perhaps things like SketchUp models. On our options bar, you'll note here that we can define the direction of the wall. So notice at the minute that the wall is going to be constructed down to a depth unconnected of three meters. So I'm going to change this. I'd like to change this to height. And then I'm going to select level two. And now the wall will be constructed from my current level, which is level one up to a height of level two. We now deal with the location line. The default is to model the wall from the wall center line, but we do have some additional options. I have the core center line, which we'll learn about a bit later. I have finish face exterior, finish face interior, or once again, the core interior face or the core exterior face. In this example, we'll just go ahead and use wall center line. You'll note here that chain is on by default. Now this is quite useful because if chain is on, I can draw consecutive walls in one operation. If I just want to draw a single wall, then I'll just remove chain. If I'm tracing around an architect's plane and I want to offset from a finished face or potentially a grid or something like that, then I can enter an offset value. When I'm constructing arcs and so on, I can select a radius. And here, yes, I do want the walls to join, so I have Allow selected. If we take a look into our Properties palette and the Type selector, we have various different types of wall that are available in this current Revit project. Now, as we discussed earlier, these walls cannot be loaded in. You can transfer them from another project, but in this example here, we'd have to create a new wall type in our current project. Let's now take a look at some basic methods to allow us to construct a wall. I'm going to use the very first one in the list here, which is cavity wall 102500p. Let's go ahead and select this wall. If I take my cursor into the screen, I can click to start drawing. And notice here, of course, wherever I point my mouse, the wall will be directed. 
I can directly type in numbers here. So if I want this to be 6,000, I can type in 6M or 6,000. And you'll notice then that wall is constructed. So again here, I might want 10,000. And then I'll come up 5,000 here. And here I'm just going to choose any value. And notice when I come down to complete the wall here, you'll notice we have a tracking path, which gives me the intersection and the vertical snap. And if I go back to the beginning, you'll see here that we're still in the wall command, but the draw operation has finished because it's detected that we've finished drawing a closed profile. You'd also notice that when I drew this wall, I worked clockwise. Now this is quite important. If I zoom in here and start to draw a wall, you'll notice that the brickwork is on the outside. If I draw this same wall but counterclockwise, you'll notice that the brick is now on the wrong face, it's on the interior. Something we can do is this, we can select the wall and then we can use this special symbol here to change the orientation of the wall. So we can do that individually, so we can do that one wall at a time, or another way to do it is to select the whole wall by hovering over a single segment of a wall such as this, pressing the tab key which then finds the loop of the walls, selecting all those walls and then pressing spacebar. And when I press spacebar you'll now notice that the brickwork is on the interior face. So let's try that again, I'll hover over the wall, press tab key, that then pre-highlights all of the walls, I can then physically select the walls and then again press spacebar. If we want to start to modify the dimensions that we've created here, I can select a wall that I want to move. So let's say that I want to change the position of this wall here, I can select it, and you'll see that Revit then presents us with a temporary dimension. You'll notice at the minute that the dimension is struck from the interior face of the wall to the interior face of this wall here. Let's say that I wanted to work from the exterior face of this wall here to the exterior face of this wall over here, I can take these temporary dimensions and I can move the witness line to a different face. So here I'm going to select the external face of this wall and the external face of this wall and then I can type in a value. So here I might want 20,000 and you'll now notice this wall has moved. If I want to recover the dimension as a permanent dimension on the plane, I can just simply select this icon here and the temporary dimension is now permanent. I can do a similar operation here. So I can select this wall, I can take the temporary dimension and actually move the witness line to the exterior face of this wall here, take this temporary dimension and move it to the exterior face here, and now I might want this to be 10 metres. And so on, we can go about positioning our walls exactly as we require them. OK, so that concludes the first part of this tutorial, which shows us some basic operations when sketching walls.